Hey, welcome back to On the Trail to Skull Hill. As we approach the season of Lent, we fixate on another theme, image, idea related to this season. The idea of the wilderness. Yes, this was actually a physical place, a place on the map for these people who lived in this arid place. They could go into the wilderness, and it was a part of Israel's history, their their movement. As they journeyed into the promised land, they went through a wilderness, a place of dunes, a place of desert, a place of arid environment, a place of dependency. So we're going to take a look at how this idea, this geographic space, this temporal space of spending time in the wilderness actually helps us understand a little bit of this season we call Lent on the trail to Skull Hill, on the way to the cross. Just a reminder, Lent is this 40-day period leading from Ash Wednesday all the way till Easter. And it's a period of time which the the church calendar invites us to consider the cross as we journey to that significant event on the cross and the resurrection. So what, what happened in the wilderness and why does this relate to Lent? Well, the wilderness was a place of refinement. Israel went through the wilderness before they entered the promised land. And if you remember, that was a transformative journey. There was a lot of griping and complaining and uh, distrust of God in the generation that entered into the wilderness and the generation that came out of the wilderness. They trusted God, the generation of Joshua. They demonstrated their trust and faith in God. They came out changed. They went to that place and there was refinement. David He was anointed king, right, and as a boy, and after that, he had some amazing, really cool things happen, like defeating Goliath, but then Saul got jealous, and as as you remember, David had to spend a lot of time running from other people, and where did he go? He went to the wilderness. David lived in the wilderness as a refugee before he took the throne of Israel. It was a place where he learned to depend on God. Read the Psalms. Read read about him in a cave. Read about him uh, praying to God to, to take care of him in these challenging times. He learned a deeper dependence on God before he became king in the wilderness. And remember, Jesus entered the wilderness before he began his ministry. After Jesus was baptized, he went into the wilderness And it was a place of temptation. So the geography of this wilderness adventure, this place of deprivation, uh, physical austerity, becomes an idea of refinement. But it also is associated with time. You know, the season of Lent is a 40-day period. So it might be helpful to take a look at different things that happened over a time frame of 40 After 40 days, Noah emerges to a cleansed earth. Remember, Noah was tucked away in the ark as God had had cleansed the corruption from the earth. It's a, a baptism, if you will. Israel spent 40 years wandering in the wilderness. After that time, the next generation emerged refocused. Remember, as we just said, it was in the wilderness. And how long did they spend there? A period of 40 years. The significance of the number 40 associated with this period of refinement and refocus. And Jesus spent 40 days in the wilderness being tempted by the evil one. That was an intentional allusion to the story of Israel as Jesus himself went into the wilderness for a period of 40. It's really fascinating when you think about this time and space that's devoted to uh, reflection, refocusing, refinement, and it happens through deprivation. Uh, Is anybody uncomfortable with that idea? Times and spaces of deprivation whet the spiritual appetite and strengthen spiritual muscles. And so we see this sense of entering Lent with this kind of intentional deprivation. And so it's common practice in Lent to fast. And this brings us to the spiritual practice of this session, fasting.
So while some Christians throughout the ages have access to a, a literal, physical desert, like there's a whole history of like desert monks that go out and, and seek God through that, that time and space of, of deprivation, believing God will provide for them. We do a spiritual practice that doesn't necessarily need the geographic space, but, but attempts to follow the same pattern. We call it fasting. We're going to put ourselves in a place of deprivation in order to better connect with God as our sustainer, and hopefully be transformed by that experience with God. Before we get there, let's take a look at Jesus' own fast in the wilderness. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give to you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him and angels came and attended him. Jesus begins his ministry with a fast, a 40-day period of refocusing and refinement. And here is where he faces temptation. What is all this about? Well, Richard Foster helps us a bit on this. He says, fasting reminds us that we are sustained by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Food does not sustain us. God sustains us. So Richard Foster here is referring to this idea of a fast. There's lots of different ways to fast, and you can try one this week. Fasting can involve going without food for a day, for a meal, for a period of time that you set ahead of time. It could also be a fast from screens or a fast from grumbling or complaining. There's all kinds of fasts that you can try, and I encourage you to try to find a fast that you want to attempt this week. But I want you to remember why we do it. We're entering into a period, a time and space of deprivation. Intentional deprivation for the sake of wetting the spiritual appetite, becoming aware of how God sustains us. And we believe it will refocus us. So here's a spiritual practice. Plan and attempt a fast of some sort this week. And while you're doing that, pray Psalm 63. Become aware of your spiritual hunger. That is the purpose of this period of deprivation. Approach God in this awareness. A spiritual practice is for the purpose of drawing near to God. Remember that as you fast. So some reflections for discussion, for journaling. How does it change your posture to remember your dependence? Discuss or journal about your awareness of God as sustainer. How does the wilderness point you to the cross of Christ?